Persuasion isn't evil, it's essential. In this video, Jay teaches us rare persuasion secrets. Enjoy. Persuasion is business. Like, it's so important as to be ridiculous. We're selling all the time, right? I think Daniel, Daniel, somebody had a book to sell as human. Napoleon Hill had selling you. We're persuading all the time. We're selling ourselves to our staff, to our suppliers, to our investors. We're selling ourselves to our customers. We're selling ourselves to like, even our own families and stuff. If, if people don't see your value and if you don't persuade them that you're valuable, they're gonna bounce, all of them, every single one. And the people who have that massive success have persuaded all kinds of people in their life that they're valuable. Uh, we're born as kids persuading someone around us to care for us. Please, someone, anyone, a teacher, an orphan, an, I mean, an orphanage, an uncle, uh, parents, whoever, we're persuading them to give us what we want. And kids have to use all kinds of different tricky methods to do this. Sometimes they're bribing, sometimes they're threatening, tantruming, sometimes they're uh, playing along, sometimes they're nurturing, whatever. But uh, if anyone out there thinks persuasion isn't the number one most important factor of business, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. So there are you know, a ton of books on this. There's that uh, FBI negotiator guy who's how to get what you want or never compromise or whatever. There's Robert Cialdini, his book Influence. There's Kevin Hogan, you know, even Napoleon Hill touches on this. But I think the, the most powerful and simplest introduction to persuasion is Blair Warren's one sentence persuasion secret. And uh, the sentence is, people will do anything you want if you encourage their dreams, justify their failures, allay their fears, throw rocks at their enemies, or give them a scapegoat. Or I got the order wrong, but that's the sentence, those five things. And it's it's true, people will do what you want if you can do those things for them. Those are massive, huge needs of most of society. There's like a, like two or three people on the planet it won't work on, but it works on it, um, nearly everyone. Smart, not so smart, pretty, not so pretty. Everyone has dreams that they're after. They have failures they've, they've had, they've had uh, fears that they, they deal with and if you can encourage and justify and allay them they will love you they become very eager to listen to you if you do those things for them they get your the value from you and they they feel indebted to you they feel that they they know like and trust you and that you're a part of their inner circle and you this is how cults work cults do all those things and uh and then people feel attached to them it's also how fanatical brands do it like apple fanatics and stuff um, and you don't have to use all of them and you don't have to use them in some sleazy way. You just have to use them. So for example, let's say you wanted someone to buy your book. If you just say, buy my book, it's not going to persuade them. If you say my book is the best, it's not going to persuade them because neither of those statements encourage their dreams, allay their fears, justify their failures, yada, yada, yada. Your sentence is not valuable to them. The, the, the thing that you are expressing is not, it doesn't touch their core needs. But if you said something like, this book is for rebels who've experienced failure, hint, it's not your fault, then it speaks to rebels who have failed and it justifies their failures. It gives them a scapegoat. It hints at giving them a scapegoat. It's not their fault. This is a much more persuasive sentence and they will read that and be like, oh, oh really? Well, well, I want to know more, like what, what's the deal here? And so this kind of thing will or persuade them to look at your book. Uh, Ryan Holiday put out a book on media manipulation. He's a pretty good persuader himself. And the book's title was Trust Me, I'm Lying, Confessions of a Media Manipulator. And this hints that there are secrets that haven't been explained to people. So again, it speaks to their lack of knowledge, like you not knowing, it's, it's not your fault that you don't know. There are secrets. At, at play. And then confessions of a media manipulator sounds like throwing rocks at enemies. Like they're sick of the media manipulators and they want to be armed against them. I can, I can now defend against media manipulation. So this is another persuasive 
uh, sentence about a book, or is in fact, it's his persuasive book title. So there are many ways to apply Blair's sentence. Uh, it's a very broad, comprehensive sentence, and it's kind of on you to figure it out, figure out how to apply it. Like Blair goes on for a hundred and something pages to explain this sentence and how to apply it. I'm not gonna do that here in this video, but hopefully you get the point. The sentences that tweak those levers, those five desires that people have are extremely persuasive. <clears throat> and the ones that don't are like fluff, ignored. And so since you're persuading all the time, when you, when you put out a meme or a piece of content, it has to hook people. Like you have to persuade them to click further, but why are they gonna click further? Well, hopefully because it looks like you're gonna encourage their dreams, it speaks to them, or it looks like you're gonna justify one of their failures, it speaks to them. It looks like you're gonna allay their fears. Like the hook hints at it. So for example, if you're a health coach and your hook is eat ice cream, cure all pain. Like people wanna click on this because they're, they dream of eating ice cream. It's one of their dreams and they're afraid they'll never get to eat it again on a diet or, or trying to fix themselves. So that hook, because it hints at those core desires will persuade people to click on it. Whereas a hook like, I cure your illnesses in a naturopathic way won't. It does not really speak to their desires. I mean, it kind of does, but they don't dream of curing themselves in a naturopathic way. They dream of eating ice cream and, and healing their illness. Which brings me to another point about persuasion. You have to know your audience. You have to know your people. You have to know your tribe. And people always say this, you gotta know your tribe, you gotta know your people. What does that even mean? And everyone's just like, yeah, I already know them. I already know them. No. I know them, you have to know their secret wishes that they don't admit to people. The stuff they never say out loud. No one says out loud, I wanna pig out on ice cream and still heal, but that is what they want. No one says, I wanna have three different women a week, because it's, it's, not, it's not okay to have that dream, it's not okay to say that, but that is what they want. Nobody says, I wanna marry a rich billionaire and not work anymore. Like, it's not cool to say that. They're not gonna tell you that, but that is what they want. No one says, I wanna game all day. I just wanna play video games, that's it. But that's their dream right now. It might not be their dream five weeks from now or five months from now or five years from now, but right now, that's what they want. And if you wanna persuade them, you have to talk to that dream or throw rocks at the parents who won't let you play games. Parents not letting you play games? I got the solution. Okay. I, I friggin' hate that, so how do I solve it? I'm persuaded, I will click, I'm interested in what you have to say, and if you can actually deliver on this, I will love you forever. You will become valuable and persuasive to them, and they will listen to everything else you tell them. Again, this is what cults do, like they give people a feeling of belonging or a refuge from people who don't understand them, and then after that, like after they've given that, then the people will do anything the, the cult says. So being persuasive is a lot of power and responsibility. A lot of cult leaders abuse it and it's not cool, but a lot of businesses use it well and it is cool. And hopefully you do too. But uh, if you have a particular niche or tribe of people that you want to speak to, you better be able to sit down and list off all their secret private dreams and all their secret private objections, like of, of reasons that they don't act on their dreams, reasons they're still held back, reasons they're stuck. And if you don't know them, you better go find one of them and get close and make friends. Like you gotta persuade them to share all the innermost secrets with you. And this will never happen if you say, oh, I already know them. Because if you already know them, then you're making bank. If you already know them, you're super rich and you're persuading them left and right. If you already know them, you're in their head saying everything they need to hear and they will love you forever. So if you don't have that, you don't know them. Don't even pretend like you do. So do I know rebels, right? Do I know them well enough? I know they feel misunderstood and unheard and like an outsider. I know they dream of being inside or included. They don't wanna admit that because rebels never wanna admit that, but that's actually what they want. They wanna be loved and celebrated and part of the mainstream and embraced. And they're always trying to take something out there and bring it mainstream. They always wanna take kink and make it mainstream or tarot and make it mainstream. 
And they never, they will, it's a secret dream. They won't admit this. They'll never say it. No, I hate money. I hate the establishment. I'm a rebel. Screw that. I hate the mainstream. It's a secret dream. But I know them because I am one. And so I can persuade them. But that's just one lever. That's just one desire. That's just one dream. Do I know everything in their head? If I do, I'm using it in my hooks and in my content and in my marketing. I'm using it to persuade. But if I'm not, then I don't know. And in persuasion, it's really important to admit that. If you don't know what your child likes, you can't get them, make them happy with a Christmas gift. If you don't know what your spouse likes, you can't fulfill their fantasies. So basically to persuade someone, you have to know where you're at and have solid beliefs that you can persuade them. Like it's doable. People are persuading all the time. You're, you've been doing it all the time. You can get better at it and you can become a persuasion master. You have to believe you can get good at it. And then you have to know your audience, like resonate with them, really resonate with them and their secret innermost desires. And then you have to persuade them using those desires with Blair Warren's sentence. And however well you do those three things, believe in your persuasion, know your audience, resonate with them and clearly express it the more persuasive you'll be and the faster and further and bigger you'll grow. <sighs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> well, then those people are calling children evil and manipulative and selfish and doing it for their own gain. Because for years, children bring very little to the economy. For years, children just take for themselves and grow. I mean, they're just manipulating people to, they'll cry when they want food and they want picked up or whatever. And it's just, they're just persuading you to do something. They're just make, pulling levers and making you do things. And you did it too. If you're here on earth, you did this. You persuaded and manipulated people all around you, not in some nefarious way, but to blossom and to grow and to become a better human. You did it to become a contributor to the economy. You did it to become uh, a business person. Persuasion is just a tool that everyone is always using and has been since birth. And like any tool, you can use it well with kindness in your heart to build a house, or you can use it poorly with hate in your heart to bludgeon or destroy. It's that simple. And only you know the truth. Like sometimes you're destroying a house to like for demolition to to because it's unsafe and it might look bad to people and there might be controversy and the government's against you and people are picketing and protesting. But if you know in your heart it was the right thing to do and you weren't doing it for money, in fact, you were losing money on it, you know if you were demolishing with love, like if you were using your tool properly, no matter how it looks to others. And so people will stand around and point fingers all the time. But is it the person doing the work with the tool who was bad? Or is it the judgy finger pointers who are bad? It's hard to tell, it's hard to know but ultimately it's up to you and no one can say anything about it. And all the people who are pointing fingers and labeling you as evil and manipulative, they're still persuading too. In fact, they're trying to persuade others to hate you. Now, how's that for manipulative? So anyways, I have done my best to cover some pretty deep secrets about persuasion that are almost never talked about. Usually it's like fluff, like, you can trick people if you give them a choice of three things and they'll choose the middle price and not the high price or the low price. I've done my best to go the extra mile and give you real persuasion teachings that matter. And I hope it was valuable to you. But I also know I can't cover it all here and I definitely have more to offer. So if you want more, hopefully I can persuade you to get more of the genius uh, in my private exclusive underground Facebook group in the link below. And if not, I guess I don't know you well enough. Peace.